So this is about industrial reconstruction and the new open 3D uh, utility that we've started to leverage. Um, so a little bit of background, industrial reconstruction is a critical part of any industrial, well, of many industrial applications because um, CAD models aren't always available for the parts. And in order to generate tool paths to operate on a part, you uh, need uh, those CAD models or just a mesh and you're not always sufficient just to have a point cloud from a 3D sensor. Uh, those aren't necessarily high enough resolution. A lot of times you need a lot of samples combined together to generate a mesh to make it usable, to have a high enough accuracy to generate a mesh that can generate a high enough accuracy tool path that can then be usable for operation. So in the past, we've been using this GitHub repository called YAC that we have supported. Uh, it uses an RGBD camera, so that's regular color camera with depth uh, and a known camera position that's attached on a robot after calibration uh, to generate what's called a truncated sign distance field or TSDF for short. Uh, this TSDF can then be converted into a mesh. Um, so this is a really handy tool to get you a higher resolution uh, mesh than you could with just a single snapshot of a camera. Uh, and you can do it with cheap, fairly cheap equipment as well. Uh, however, this YAC installation process can sometimes be cumbersome. It requires installing CUDA. Uh, anyone who's done that on a computer knows that that can sometimes be uh, annoying to do, and it also requires other libraries. And then we've also recently encountered some issues when using this of the edge of the field of view of the camera causes some less accurate data. Uh, which find its way into the mesh sometimes, and then small inaccuracies in camera calibration can also sometimes lead to these uh, odd ar artifacts being created in the mesh. So either uh, edge is rounded, or you have a lifted section in the middle of the mesh because the camera just happened to see a certain part of it, the, mesh, the part from a certain field of view. Um, and so these are some uh, issues that we've encountered sometimes using YAC. So let's introduce Open3D. Open3D is an open source library that supports rapid development of software that deals with 3D data. Uh, quote from their GitHub page of the README. And so basically Open3D, like it says, is just an open source utility to work with a lot of different operations of 3D data. It provides an easy to use Python interface that contains many capabilities, including the previously mentioned TSDF. Um, and it's easily installed just by running a pip install command. And so it doesn't really require any other dependencies. It's just ready to go right out of the box with a Python interface. And since it has Python interface, it can uh, easily interact with ROS, which is very handy for us. So we've started to do some of that. So this is a video this is the same ABB robot with that calibrated camera on it of uh, running a live mesh reconstruction in real time using this uh, camera. So you'll see on the, the main screen, you have the robot with the camera looking at this mesh that it's reconstructing. That is not a point cloud feed. That is the actual mesh that's reconstructing. I hid the point cloud just to make it easier to see what's going on. And then in the bottom left, you can see the depth camera and the color camera. Um, data coming in. So you'll see I have it set to where it updates every 50 or so images that it gets and it updates the mesh. And this has generated a mesh live in color um, in Arviz. So previously also with Yak, we did not have the ability to have color in our images. Uh, so uh, overall, it can generate a fully colorized mesh. Uh, it has clean edges on it, so it behaves really consistently. It's very fast. This was uh, that was run at two times speed, uh, but that's mainly for sake of moving the robot slow enough to capture the TF frame data of the camera accurately, and because it can work with ROS, we're able to maintain the exact same interface that Yak had for ROS, and so you have the same service calls calling this new interface and you get uh, meshes out very quickly. Additionally, we've done some testing on some 
tricky, trickier objects to scan. So if you know much about uh, RGBD cameras or just general point cloud generation, reflective objects are very hard to mesh or to get data from. It's because these cameras work by shining an infrared light pattern and then reading that known pattern in the camera, it can calculate uh, positions of the object. So if you have something reflective, it causes a lot of confusion uh, for the camera. So on the left, you can see in the top left of the left picture, you can see a picture of this part. In the bottom left, you can see what depth data is coming back. And then you can see the point cloud right next to it. So if you notice all of these black spots on the depth uh, camera indicate that it can't see the mesh or it can't see the object at that location. And you can see that in the point cloud, there's a lot of missing data from just this one snapshot. But if we take data from all different angles and uh, different distances away, uh, you can generate a mesh using this open 3D reconstruction. So that resulting mesh that I was able to generate is seen on the right. And you can see that we were able to capture a vast majority of the part. There's still some holes if you look closely, um, but this again is a very tricky part. And I was also just manually moving the robot around with the teach pendant. Uh, it wasn't an optimized path, which so I think we could see even better results if we had a more optimized refined path. And also you can see in this lower right hand picture, uh, we have very nice vertical edges. Uh, and this was captured from all sorts of different angles. So this is a behavior that we weren't getting when we were using Yak in the past. So summarize as a quick overview. So Open3D provides a user-friendly interface that is quick and easy to install and has many useful algorithms, many of which we still haven't explored. Uh, the results have been really great. It has a colorized mesh, which is really handy for using, especially if you're trying to generate tool paths to have reference geometry that with color, it makes it a lot easier to know where to try to generate the tool paths. Um, we have a live visualization of the reconstructed mesh, which is also something that we had to a small extent in Yak, but this is a much nicer interface because you can see it in Arviz, and we're getting consistent and clean edges. Um, so we're currently developing the ROS interface. I was obviously just using it in ROS, but it's in early stages of development right now, and this should mimic Yak's interface, um, except this one will be entirely written in Python. Um, and there's potential for many more features because Open3D has a whole suite of tools that we haven't even yet explored to use. Um, so we're excited about the potential of this and we think it'll kind of open up for a lot of opportunities. Wow, Tyler, thanks. It looks really promising. Thanks for, um, thanks for, um, thanks for sharing this update and um, I'll keep pestering you about a blog post as well, don't worry. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but um, any questions for Tyler on industrial reconstruction? Chris, no questions from you. Impressive work on that aluminum piece, right? That's like, so for those who don't know, right, that aluminum piece gets passed around as like the, the death, the death to any camera. We try to, <laughs> try to get data on that. That's our go-to uh, difficult piece to test this stuff. So it looked really promising. Uh, nice example, Tyler, I appreciate it. Especially for a $150 camera to get that data. It's very impressive. Right, so that's a real nice use case, right? You can get a little bit more consistency out of these lower cost cameras. Right. So, uh, and yeah, the, the state of low cost cameras is a whole other topic for another day. Yeah. So that was also the Orbeck Astra camera, same camera that Chris had talked about. Yeah. So, but also works with the Intel line of cameras, right? Yes. 